Not even a year ago, early one of the first weeks of my time as pastor here at St. John's, Bob Wirt took his seat just a few pews back from that open aisle halfway down. And the story in this congregation is whenever Bob sat down, people shifted in their pews to get closer to hear his voice. But the reality was you didn't have to be that close. <laughs> And Clint came up to me and said, there's a gentleman here by the name of Bob Wirt. Go and say hi to him. And so I, I went and introduced myself, and, and the first thing Bob said to me was, you have a great task ahead of you, young man. <laughs> <laughs> He's not ta he wasn't talking uh, uh, about what I thought he was talking about. He, he pointed to the bulletin, and he said, this is one of my favorite passages, some beautiful music selections today, and he said, do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about worship, the special task, the great task, the opportunity to gather together to worship God in a community of love and of faith. I tell this story because today we gather first to worship God, and we do that by remembering and celebrating a beloved, beloved life. Yes, this is a hard day. In the midst of our loss, there is grief, and we feel that, but my, my hope is that through our worship, through our excellent music today, through our, our prayers, our liturgy, and our storytelling, through our remembering, we might see grace, God's grace, that we might find comfort in our pain, hope in our sorrow, and in death, resurrection. And so, as Bob did many times, I want to invite you to stand and sing as you are able, as you are willing, number 68, number 68, when in our music God is glorified.
Will you pray with me? O God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Give to us now your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying our life may be in you, and that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
The New Testament reading today comes from Romans chapter 8. Over the years that Bob Ward attended St. John's, he and I had several conversations about the importance of reading scripture in a meaningful way. So it is an honor for me today to read scripture for him. God's love in Christ Jesus. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of God for the people of God.
Our Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. And I would invite you to stand for the reading of the Gospel. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to Thomas, I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. In just a moment, Bobby McMillan will lead us in a time of naming. We will remember Bob as a brother, as a son, as a spouse and parent, a friend and neighbor, a a choir master and a total churchman, a united Methodist, a follower of Jesus Christ, and as a beloved child of God. We practice remembering in services like these, because Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And of course, in these times we say, our hearts are troubled. How could they not be? In death and grief, the very hard and and confusing realities of life are never more apparent. But in my experience, when we Simply remember the things that we loved about someone. When we remember the things we loved doing together, that's how we keep someone in our hearts. That's how some peace begins to stir amidst the trouble. So that's our practice in this time, to remember And so as I speak, as Bobby speaks, I invite you yourself to consider, what do I name him? How do I remember Bob? Now I feel it's it's my job to try and point towards what God called him. And so this week, I sat with Bob's story. It is a big story. It is an expansive story. All of the amazing parts and pieces just were in me all week long. It was not easy to find a central point to talk about here. Bob has a a long resume, an interesting education, a list of ways that he impacted churches and people through ministry. He has a wonderful family, just like cool personal hobbies, and the list goes on. But I kept coming back to a specific piece that I think is at the heart of his story. Now, maybe it's the pastor in me, but I kept coming back to Bob's faith practice, his faith, because it's different than some of ours. Bob's faith practice was truly life-giving to others, truly life-giving to himself. And I just sat with that, and I knew it was an example that, that I longed for, an example that I needed to take a closer look at. 
And I thought of our scripture today where it says Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. One that, um, one that is often like harshly interpreted with, with some eternal consequences. But I think Bob knew it was a practicum. Bob showed us Jesus' way, truth, and life. Bob lived out Jesus' way of love. From more than one of you, I heard the phrase that Bob lived love. He lived love because he knew he was loved first. As a good United Methodist, he believed in God's grace as a boundless, unending love that cannot be earned, but a love that is given freely to all, one that nothing can separate us from, nor this or that. He lived that love. It was clear through the integrity in which he lived, through the kindness and dignity that he showed other people. So in a world where I see lots of fear, separation, hatred, and more, I know I'm going to remember that Bob practiced love. Bob lived love. Bob was an example of Jesus' way of love. Bob found Jesus' truth for him by listening to God's call. I think the reality is Bob could have done many things with his life. He was musically talented, a Renaissance man, smart, charming, yet he listened to a familiar call from Jesus to follow. And for Bob, that meant serving in the church. I know it was a call. I know it was more than a job because I am someone who went to an East Coast school, Boston University, and moved out here <laughs> just like he did. I know what it's like to move from the city out here first to small town West Texas and then to Lubbock. I know what it's like to move a young wife <laughs> out here. It was a call. He was faithful in following God, his shepherd. He wanted to make a difference in people's lives, a difference in the church, and he did. And so in a world where it is difficult to listen, where truth and fiction seem to have a, a blurred line in so many ways, I'm going to remember that Bob found truth for him, for his life, by listening. By listening to the divine, by listening to others, by listening to himself. Bob found life. Bob found life in God and community. He sought out God through music, art, and nature. In theology, worship, church history, and church presence, Bob sought out God through people, his family, his friends, through church folks. I loved about how, how he talked about music and worship and how they go together. He talked very simply, about knowing the words and practicing the music and letting it all sink in. It was like our, our opening hymn. Letting it sink in is how it leads to that profound alleluia, how we become instruments of worship. I want to sing together like that. So in a world longing for authentic life, longing for passionate relationships, longing to discover beauty, I know I'm going to remember that Bob's faith, his faith 
was a life-giving one for him and for others. So here's what I realized. Through Bob's living, we, we received a saint, lowercase s, saint, meaning someone who sought to love God and love their neighbors, someone who was intentional about life and faith. And I know it was a gift for me, and I think for all of you, a gift to have known this saint. So, I have two invitations for you. Number one, take time to remember. Make it a practice. Don't move too quickly past this life. And sometimes we can be tempted to just jump back in. Witness this authentic faith. And number two, let his story change you, impact you. Bob is an example and an inspiration. And so, take time to remember. Because if you do, this story will change you. This person, this saint, this life can point us to a loving, abundant, and good way to live. A loving, abundant, and good God. Amen. Standing here at the baptismal font, we remember our baptism. And specifically today, we remember the baptism of Robert Malin Wirt. When we are baptized in the United Methodist Church, our liturgy has a question. What name is given this child? And his parents gave him the name of Robert Malin, or as we know him, Bob. Now, the, we have this time in this service to do, as Josh has already said, to give the name we would give him. Now, the name is to summarize the life and the death of the person. To summarize the life and the death Josh has already helped us realize that is a pretty big task for a man like Bob. But I'll do my best. What I'm thinking of is that when we are baptized, we are given the name that we are to live and show others who they are as well as who we are. When we're baptized, as Josh has already said it, we are called beloved child of God. This past Sunday was Transfiguration Sunday when Jesus went to the mount and his disciples saw him in a new way. And they heard a voice saying, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. But that goes back to the baptism of Jesus. For when he was baptized and came out of the water, it is said that a spirit descended upon him like a dove with the words, this is my beloved child. I think of Bob as a beloved child upon whom the spirit of servanthood descended. Now, Josh has spoken of him as a churchman, a Renaissance man. Well, I want to say a few things about how I experienced his servanthood. One of them was 
he helped all of us learn what it means to be a man of, of dignity and integrity, and always a man of impeccable taste. You never saw Bob dressed down, ever. When I was a chaplain at Joe Arrington Cancer Center, Bob would come for infusions, for blood, a blood infusion. Most of the patients there would be dressed like you would expect if they were in a cancer center. Bob would be dressed, not always in a blazer, but always dressed very dignified and very meticulously. But one of the places that surprised me the most in seeing his dressing impeccably was at the Wellness Today gym. <laughs> the rest of us would be there in our grody shorts and t-shirts and tennis shoes, and you would look up and there would be Bob marching around the track in his walk, dressed what I would do when I'm dressing up casually for an evening out. Again, this dignity, a servant, but always showing you dignity and integrity. But the thing that strikes me most about the Bob that we knew in later life that gives meaning to his baptism was I think he took very seriously, possibly, the second chapter of Philippians where it says, have this mind among yourselves that was in Christ, who did not count it good to, have, to flaunt equality with God, but emptied himself and became a servant. And you know where I saw that happening? As Josh said, when Bob retired and left St. Luke's, where he had last served, he started coming to St. John's, and he would sit. I remember it a little bit farther back to the back of the church, on, over to the side of the aisle on this side of the church, right on the outside. He would be here early in his place, and there he sat not as one who had to lead and direct, but as one who came to worship, to be a part of the congregation. And there he lifted his voice, singing the praises and the alleluias of the God he had served all of his life in ministry. People around him wanted to sit somewhat in his vicinity, because I think maybe his singing, the way he did with that huge voice, called forth from them the desire to sing the alleluias of praise. So Bob was a child of God, upon whom the spirit of praise and celebration and serving came and filled his life. And every Sunday after worship, Bob would make a beeline down this aisle to come and tell Clint what a magnificent job he had done in music, or to tell, uh, give praise to the choir. He would continue to wait out in the hall, and I encountered him many times out there, where he would start talking about what the music meant to him and sharing his own love of the church and of serving. And on those Mondays where I would encounter him in the gym, he would review Sunday's worship, never critically, but with gratitude, because he had emptied himself of the pride to be needed, the pride that said, I have to be in leadership. Rather, he emptied himself in order to enable others to praise. So he lived up to his calling. And I think when he was baptized, maybe he heard the call from God. You are my beloved child. That is who you are. 
Now live it out by serving as a deacon, as one who waits tables, serves others, and calls forth from them the alleluias of praise. And to his dying day, Bob Work continued to praise his maker while he had breath. And when his voice was lost in death, praise still employs his nobler powers. Amen.
Will you join me in this prayer of commendation? God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways, we trust you. Receive Bob into the arms of your mercy. Raise him up with all your people. Receive us also and raise us into a new life. Help us so to love and serve you in this world that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. Amen. And let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And one more time, let us stand and sing number 378, Amazing Grace.
be seated. I think I will speak for the family and say thank you all for gathering in this time to remember and celebrate um, a beloved man. You are invited to continue remembering across the hall in the garden room for a reception, and there will be time for further storytelling, because as Bobby and I have said again and again, we can't capture his life in this short time. So you all continue on in your own way. I would also like to thank our, our open choir today, um, made up of lots of people, um, and different people, but many from uh, the choirs of St. Luke's and uh, here at St. John's. So receive this benediction, and then uh, Clint will play for all the saints. And I invite you to remain seated for that. <clears throat> May we go with the peace that comes from gathering in the presence of God in one another. May the memories of Bob be your companion. May they bring laughter and joy when your heart is heavy. May they bring strength when the days are long. May they be a reminder of the gifts of life. On this day and in the days ahead, May God hold you, encourage you, and sustain you with love. Let us go in peace, and let us know that the God of peace goes with us. Amen. Amen.